Nathan Donnelly here with Crop King, and what we're doing today is we're going through and getting our tomato house set up. So we're gonna go over drain line installation, and then we'll go over the Beto bucket and the different pieces, parts of the Beto bucket, what we go through and we use to fill them with, and then installing our supply line and our drip tubes and explaining what different emitters and stakes that we go through and use. So we're going through and we're assembling our drain line for our Beto bucket system. This is a brand new drain line, so the first thing that we need to do is go through and silicone our end cap on. And all I'm gonna do is take my silicone, run a bead around the inside here, slip it on the end of the drain line, go through, pick up my drain line, just goes through, slips on the end. So now we're down here at the drain end, and this is our collection cup. So our drain line goes through and takes a collective sample from all of our Beto buckets. It goes through and it drops it here into this collection cup here so we can go through and take our pH and our EC samples. We don't want the water to go through and overflow, so we've got to go through and put a set of three holes in here. So I've got my drill. It's got a half inch drill bit in it. And drill a hole here. One on the back side. And then one on the other side. And then just like we did on the end cap here on the drain line, we're gonna run a bead of silicone on the inside here. Then take our drain line, push it on the inside, leave that set there to dry. So our greenhouse is at a one and a half percent slope. The north end of the greenhouse is high, the south end of the greenhouse is low. So when we're going through and we're putting in our interior sections of our drain line, we wanna go through and make sure that the high section goes through and nests inside the section as it goes through and gets lower. So that as the water's going through and flowing down our drain line, it just like the shingles on your roof, it goes through and drains into here. Instead of if that was reversed, we have this lip where the water is gonna wanna go through and try to sneak underneath and it just gives us less water on our floor. So to do that, we take our silicone, just to go through and give us some additional sealant. Go through and drop a bead on the bottom of the channel there, or bottom of the drain line. And then I go through and I nest that section in the top, give it a couple twists to move that silicone around. And we just move on down the section. So then this section ends up in the top of the next section, so on and so forth as you move down the greenhouse. So this is our 11 liter Beto bucket that goes through and it has this inch and a half reservoir down in the bottom to go through and hold some water to go through and keep your vine crops hydrated there during the uh, evening hours because we do not run irrigation on a vine crop 24 seven. We're going through and we're pulsing water multiple times a day during the lit hours. In the bottom of the bucket, it goes through and it receives a double elbow. So the reason for the double elbow is roots grow down, not up, right? So if we go through and we put the double elbow, in the hole in the bottom of the bucket, the roots would have to grow up over and down to go through and plug that hole. Um, since roots only grow down and not up, it shouldn't go through and plug your drain on your bucket. If you run irrigation too much, the roots will chase water and you will go through and plug up the drain line here in the bucket. We go through and we fill our buckets with perlite. The reason we use 100% uh, perlite in our Beto buckets is because perlite is completely inert. It has no influence on pH, no influence on EC. And so it goes through and allows us to manipulate the nutrient environment the way that we want it to be. And we don't have influence from like lime that is in peat or salts that might go through and build up in core and so on and so forth. And so we pre-moisten our perlite while it's still in the bag. That goes through and helps reduce the dust and goes through and helps settle all the fine particles down to the bottom of the bag that could potentially go through and plug up our drain hole. And then when I fill these, I go through and I fill them up to, there's a lip in the top of the bucket here. I go through and I fill them up to that top lip. So as we're going through and filling our Beto buckets with the perlite, we're gonna go through and lay them down on the drain line. And when we go through and we lay them down on the drain line, they get laid down on either side of the drain line opposite, right? 16 inches on centers. So what I've done, so I don't have to go through and measure every single bucket as I'm going through and laying it down on the drain line. I have a stick that I have cut that is 16 inches long. And so then we go through after we place our first bucket on the drain line, we go through and set our second bucket on the drain line. And then I take my stick, go through and lay it in the center of this bucket. 
And then I can just slide this bucket down until this end of this stick falls in the center. And then we just continue to repeat the process going on down the line. Again, buckets on opposite sides, 16 inches on center. So we got that hot with the heat gun. Then we go through and we slide that as far back as it'll go on our 90, because this is our water that's going through and coming from our injection system. So in our last bucket, after we've gone through and gotten our feed line pulled down across the top of the buckets in the center of the bucket, I'm gonna drill a hole in the bucket in that lip so that then I can take my tube and zip tie it in tight so that as we're going through and putting in our emitters, this isn't walking around everywhere on me. And so you see that this is pretty much laid down through the center of the buckets so that we will be able to go through and fold this over to kink it off to keep the water from blowing out the end. So our next step is gonna be going through and punching our holes in our irrigation line to put our feed tubes in. And our feed tube goes through and consists of a half gallon per hour pressure compensated emitter, right? When we go through and we do these long runs, we go through and we use a pressure compensating emitter so that the pressure in the line has to go through and build up to a point to open up a diaphragm that's inside this emitter to let the water go through and, and run so that we don't end up with more water in the front end, less water in the back end, and then when the water goes through and shuts off, they all go through and shut off at the same time. Because like I said earlier, this greenhouse is at a slope, so the far end of the greenhouse is lower than the top end. If we had non-pressure compensating emitters, it would let all that water run down to the back end, and the back end of our house would always be wetter than the front end of our house. So in the long runs, we go through and we use the pressure compensating emitter. Shorter runs, we go through and use non-PC. Then we've got our 5.3 spaghetti tube, so five millimeter outside diameter, three millimeter inside diameter, cut 18 inches long. That then goes to our barbed stake, which is what goes through and sticks down into the perlite to go through and make sure that the water goes where we want it instead of on the floor. This is the miracle punch that we go through and sell for punching all these lines. That little punch goes through and comes down that pokes our hole that our emitter goes into. So basically from here to here would be three to three and a half feet. And then from our drain line here to here would be five feet. 